Hello, I'm Henry, and I'm the lead author of the China Digital Health Report 2021 by SCMP Research. SCMP Research is the business industry research arm of South China Morning Post. Our mandate is to help our readers make better business decisions with an insider's understanding of China's complex and fast-paced market. Our coverage focuses on China's most consequential industries, specifically in healthcare, internet, artificial intelligence, as well as fintech. It's an honor today to be a part of the Asia Healthcare Innovation Summit, and I am very, very excited to share the stage and platform with many industry leaders here from Hong Kong and the greater region. For my time with you today, I'd like to share with you all our perspective of the overview of China's digital health industry. Because of the limited time that we have, we won't be able to go through the details of every sector. But my hope is that this sharing will be informative, interesting, and helpful to your needs. So without a further ado, let's get started. This is our agenda for today. We will spend majority of our time going through the current state of digital health industry, uh, both globally and in China. We will spend time setting the stage, defining the terms. We'll talk about the overview of the industry and the drivers behind the recent growth. And then we'll zoom into the current state of China's healthcare and digital health industry and dive deep into the internet healthcare sector from there. Finally, we'll close the presentation by summarizing a few key open questions in the industry in China today. So, what is digital health? SCMP research defines digital health as the industry in applying technology to the full life cycle of healthcare. In our current day and age, we think the key types of relevant technologies are one, internet and mobile technologies, two, artificial intelligence, three, information and communications technology, or ICT, and four, uh, big data techniques and systems. We think that the life cycle of healthcare as one, healthcare prevention, two, healthcare diagnosis, three, healthcare treatment monitoring, and four, long-term health management. Now, we are aware that these specific terms within the framework of this definition may or may not evolve over time, but I think for 2021, we thought these are the appropriate terms. Now, based on the types of technology applied, we've categorized digital health into four broad sectors. First, internet healthcare, referring to the use of internet and mobile technology to provide virtual and remote services. Second is artificial intelligence in healthcare, and we define it as the use of AI or machine learning to emulate human cognition for specific healthcare use cases. Three, healthcare IT, the more traditional side of digital health. Number four, um, do we have big data in healthcare, and that refers to the broad use of traditional data as well as new data such as laboratory data, insurance, pharmaceutical data, and data from the medical supply chain. From our research, we found that digital health as a sector has grown consistently over the past decade, with a total funding raised in a year growing by more than 25 times. Even though there was a slight slowdown in funding size, uh, in, in the past year, in 2019. But as you can see, investors and venture builders globally are still very, very active in terms of the number of deals made. Uh, in 2020, the total funding amount has reached an all-time high of 26.5 billion US dollars. But that leads to the question, why has the sector been growing? What has been driving the growth? Based on our research, we've identified seven key factors behind this growth. Specifically, we can see four macro sectors laid out on the left-hand side of the slide. Uh, and these, sec uh, these, uh, these factors, we believe, are creating the overall contextual pressure for better and more healthcare services. On the right-hand side, 
we've laid out three of what we call technology drivers, creating the conditions for the large scale dis digital transformation that we're seeing as a society and as well as in the digital health sector. So first of all, as many of you guys know, the population around the world has been aging at an unprecedented rate. And it's especially true for China. According to the United Nations, it is estimated that over 26% of the population in China will be aged 65 years and over by 2050. And the ratio between working population and age population is expected to grow from 10 to 1 in 2000 to 2 to 1 in 2050. The latest China census was just released a few weeks ago, and we saw that this trend is very much on its way. This shift in the population mixed, combined with the size of the overall population, suggests to us that the demand for healthcare systems was, is going to increase over the following years. For digital health, this suggests a huge boost in the potential demand. The second factor is on the supply side. According to the World Bank, there is a shortage in the health wor workforces worldwide. Importantly, the shortage gap is expected to widen, growing more than two times from 2013 to 2030. By 2030, we're expected to have a 15 million shortage of workers in the industry. For digital health, I think this creates an opportunity for technology and use cases to step in to augment and supplement the existing healthcare workers to bring productivity and efficiency gains. Of course, country, uh, governments and countries around the world are well aware of the potential of digital health and, and, and the, the strong opportunity that it offers. As such, the third driver we've identified is that globally, governments have been building the foundation of digital health through various governmental uh, initiatives as well as policies. The final macro driver that we cannot miss is COVID-19. During the pandemic, more people are avoiding non-essential contact and the adoption of virtual health services has increased substantially. On the left-hand side of the slide, we see that the adoption of telemedicine has tripled in a nine-month period in the U.S. We'll make sure to touch on the numbers in China uh, specifically later on. In addition to adoption, COVID has created the perfect storm for entrepreneurs as well as innovators to identify use cases uh, in digital health to iterate on them and create impact for the society. So in, in addition to the virtual healthcare services, players have developed many other use cases such as genome sequencing, AI computer vision on lung CAT scans, and contact tracing for large-scale data, big data analytics. On the technology side, data volume has grown strongly, driven by the adoption of electronic health record systems across the world. This increase in adoption has boosted the mass of healthcare data by more than 10 times in the past seven years. For your reference, one exabyte is about one million terabytes or one trillion gigabytes. And if you store all of that data into the da portable data tablets, that, that, that distance would actually lead us to reach one third of the way to the moon. That's how much data that has been collected in the past years. The second factor under technology is the penetration of internet as well as mobile. I'm sure these trend lines will not come as a surprise to anyone in the room, but internet and mobile are key enabling infrastructures to digital health and specifically to the internet healthcare sector. The final factor is computing powers. For those of you familiar with AI and the big data space, you may have heard that the growth in data combined with the improvement in computing power has been the key drivers behind the development of AI. It is definitely the case for digital health as well, especially in healthcare AI and big data. So next, we will zoom into the digital health landscape of China, as well as the internet healthcare industry specifically. 
The following slides are a little denser, uh, so please bear with me. First of all, we want to set the stage. The overall healthcare industry of China has been evolving over the years and has, has had series of reforms. We've made tremendous strides as a country and are delivering care to more people at a much higher level than ever. However, the system is not perfect, not yet perfect, and our perspective is that healthcare industry in China is facing three major problems. First, there's an imbalance of healthcare resources in China. As you can see from the graph on the left hand side, the share of hospital visits in China that are, are very focused on the grade three hospitals, and these are the best hospitals in the country. But for your reference, grade three hospitals only make up less than 10% of the total number of hospitals in China. However, as you can see on the graph, they're serving over 50% of the visits. Now granted, these grade three hospitals have a higher capacity, but the concentration is still very staggering. Second, insurance coverage is wide in China, but patients are still paying out of pocket a lot. As you can see in the middle graph, the out of pocket portion in China is substantially higher than that um, in the than in UK, Germany, and the US. Thirdly, the pharmaceutical landscape in China is changing quickly and becoming more competitive. In the recent years, the National Health Security Association in China has introduced the National Reimbursement Drug List, or the NRDL. This list you know, essentially asks pharmaceutical companies for significant price cuts to be included in the public insurance scheme of China. Now these introductions are improving patient access to drugs in China, and it's increasing the competitive pressure of players in the industry. As you can see, the price cuts have hovered around 50%. Even though the increase in, in demand will be substantial for these players, the pharma companies based in China or looking to come into China will still need to have significant operational and R&D efficiency gains to make the business cases work. We are excited about the positive development from a patient's perspective. From a company's perspective, we think there are quite a little bit of work to be done by these companies. When we were building out the report, we really used these three key questions to guide the sector, the players, and the use cases we explore for digital health sp uh, specifically. Based on our research, we weren't really able to find convincing evidences on the impact digital health has made, but we do have some findings. We'll be sure to come back to this at the end of the pre uh, presentation. Now, if we zoom into the digital health specter uh, specifically, we notice two very notable trends suggesting that digital health has already set up a very strong foundation in China. First, more than 85% of hospitals in China has adopted electronic medical systems. This is without a doubt the impact made by the government initiatives and policies over the past years. Um, this is also supported by the highly localized healthcare IT providers in China. Now this is a quite a high and promising number. Um, however, if we look closer, the maturity of the EMR systems in China are still quite inconsistent. As a matter of fact, in 2018 and 2019, you can see that both grade two and grade three hospitals are still relatively in a low level maturity in their EM EMR systems. And the government have made explicit goals for, company, uh, for hospitals throughout the country to meet a higher level grade, level three and four maturity, uh, by 2020 by the grade two and three hospitals respectively. Now we haven't been able to find the results for the last year yet, but I think it will be very interesting to see the progress made uh, in, in the country. So what's the implication of this? Uh, I, I think there are several opportunities for players uh, just pointed by this notable trend. I think first of all, the traditional healthcare IT players 
and these are the HIS uh, providers, they are very likely already in the hospitals. They have a huge opportunity to offer more sophisticated services, such as connected system, big data and analytics capabilities and cloud services um, to the hospitals in China to up the level of maturity. And these upselling opportunities can be great growth drivers for them. In addition, we found that CDSS, meaning Clinical Decision Support System, um, is in the requirement of some of the higher level maturity levels uh, for EMR. This may offer opportunities for some of the AI players in the CDSS space to work more closely with the incumbent healthcare IT players. Thirdly, we see that the highest level of EMR, um, the, there is a public health element that comes into play. And therefore, this can offer big data players great opportunities. The second point that really stood out is the growth of the internet healthcare sector. As you can see, the number of internet hospitals in China has grown substantially, and the growth was further exacerbated by COVID-19. Regarding usage, as you can see on the right-hand side, we saw a 17 times increase in the number of remote sessions uh, by the hospitals uh, managed by the China's National Health Commission. Um, Ping An, good doctor, one of the case study candidates and a leader in this space, also saw a 10 times growth in new application user registrations during the same time period. So these are very, very strong numbers. Uh, but hold on a second, what exactly is included in internet healthcare? As we've mentioned earlier in the presentation, we think of internet healthcare as the use of internet and mobile technology uh, to provide healthcare for patients. We think there are roughly three groups of players in the internet healthcare space, and each of them offers slightly different services. First of all, we have internet hospitals, and these are licensed entities in China that provide online consultation services for patients. For you as a user, you can visit with fully licensed doctors on your computer or on your phone directly. Now these players are either led by the government or led by enterprises where the entities typically start off as a technology platform and scale into physical presence. Secondly, we have the middle bucket and that is the online pharmacies. And these players are able to de deliver prescription drugs as well as the common over-the-counter drugs directly to your do doorstep. Now, the clear clearest use case is usually the direct-to-consumer model, but there are also other models. The O2O model, for example, means you as a patient can order online and pick up at a local pharmacy closest to you. This would be most appropriate for emergencies where you need uh, a drug within the short time period. There are also B2B models where players offer delivery services to smaller independent pharmacies, so, sort of serving as their supplier. Thirdly, there are online communities where medical professionals, students, researchers exchange information, notes, and practices. There are also virtual health communities where patients uh, typically of chronic diseases can share their ex experiences and support each other. Another thing to note within the sector is that many players actually play within many boxes um, on the slide. And we think their intention is to create a closed loop ecosystem of internet healthcare to boost usage from the users as soon as they enter into the ecosystem from one of their channels. Currently, there are roughly 54 million internet healthcare users in China right now. And online consultation and appointment registration are the highest usage um, um, use cases out of the users. Um, and they're registering 60% and 44% of total usage, respectively. But what we found interesting was that online sales of drugs only makes up about 20% of users' usage. However, it's making up a big portion of revenue within the entire internet healthcare space. For example, Ali Health, which by the way is an affiliated company with SEMP, is generating 84% of its revenue from sales. 
JD Health at 88% and Pingan Good Doctor at 54%. Now this is extremely interesting to us, suggesting that you know, on one hand, these technology players have been very successful in taking their core competency in e-commerce, for example, and in, into the healthcare space and being successful at it. But it also means that it may take some time for patients in China to be willing to pay for online services. The total market of internet healthcare was estimated to be 100 billion RMB in 2020, and the sector is projected to grow at a staggering 50% over the next couple of years. And accordingly, we've seen very strong support and funding in the space as well. Uh, and it includes a couple IPOs here in Hong Kong, actually, uh, with JD Health and with Alibaba. So now let's zoom back out and look at China's digital health market as a whole. Based on our research, we estimate the entire market size to be 225 billion RMB. Among the four sectors, we see that internet healthcare, led by Pingan Good Doctor and JD Health, for example, is taking up the majority share of the market. This sector is, has also achieved substantial growth um, and is expected to continue driving the growth looking forward. The traditional healthcare IT sector ranked second in terms of size and is the most mature market. The sector mainly comprises legacy providers and we expect the favorable mandatory government policies we've mentioned earlier to continue to drive the growth of the sector. AI and big data are two growth sectors we didn't get a chance to dig into today. Um, these sectors are much smaller compared to the two, but players um, are really making headlines these days. And, and, the, and, and these are sectors with very high, strong potentials. We expect them to make up a bigger part of the market over time. Finally, I want to quickly come back to the three key questions we face in the healthcare industry in China, as I promised I would. Even though we don't have very clear answers yet, I want to share what we found. So, number one, has digital health improved healthcare services in China, specifically on those three dimensions? Uh, number one, has digital health um, helped reduce the imbalance of healthcare uh, in China? Um, we, we, we think it has addressed the geographical imbalance just because of the virtual nature. Unfortunately, it has not solved the problem um, of the concentration of grade three hospitals um, in China. Secondly, has digital health reduced out-of-pocket expenses um, in China? We think absolutely yes. Even the consultation costs for hospital visits is roughly the same for in-person and virtual. Uh, we think patients are saving significantly in commuting costs and other related expenses. Um, and these are very much enabled by digital health. Finally, has digital health helped pharmaceutical companies stay competitive? We don't quite know that yet, unfortunately. Um, drug development is very obviously a very, very hot area for AI and big data, um, both in terms of the number of projects and in terms of funding. But we've so far only been able to find anecdotal evidences on the efficiency gains. How these gains have translated to price cuts or savings for the companies, especially when we account for investments, um, is still unclear to us. That concludes my presentation for today. We hope this talk was interesting to you and that you found this inf uh, information helpful. If you are interested to learn more about SCMP research, please feel free to scan these QR codes. Also, please feel free to reach out to our team or myself directly if you would like to connect and have a follow-up conversation. Again, thank you, Asia Healthcare Innovation Summit, for the opportunity. It was an honor to share with you today, and we hope to hear from you guys soon. Thank you.